Hi, and welcome to Optimum TV. Today I'm joined by Michael Bauer, partner at Novo Holdings Venture Investments, which has just led a £90 million Series A investment round into Mirix Bio, a spin out from Imperial College London and the Francis Crick Institute. This is the largest Series A for a European biotech of 2024 and one of the largest of all time in terms of the UK. So, Michael, £90 million is a huge amount of money for a Series A. How come Mirix commanded that sum? Yeah, hi, Stephen. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's indeed a very large Series A for a UK biotech, or any biotech indeed. Um, and a lot of factors play into this. Uh, I mean, ADCs have become a very hot topic in oncology. They've shown superior clinical profiles compared to standard chemo alone. And the market size for those compounds is now projected to reach 28 billion already in 2028. And um, yet with that, you know, they have been a, a hot area for acquisitions lately. However, the, the field is really lacking new ADC payloads. Um, and we'll get back to that a little later. But um, Mirix really in that, recent, in that sense has shown very strong target validation with their new class of payloads for ADCs. And all in all, this together, sort of this has really sort of um, come us to the table. We've been following Mirix for quite some time uh, mm -hmm. already when they were seeded. Um, you know, since we have an office here in the UK, in London, we do follow the UK uh, scene quite closely. And this is one of the hot prospects. And after they pivoted into ADCs, the decision to join the round was very easy. Okay. So is this very large series a indicative of a positive direction of travel um, in terms of uh, European biotech? Obviously, it's been a difficult couple of years. Or is it more about the fact that Mirix's technology is unique and you know, potentially offers new avenue for ADCs? Yeah, that's a very good one. I think, you know, the payloads that we've seen come out of Mirix are really giving us confidence that we're really looking into a possibility to expand the current repertoire of ADCs, um, which is really restricted to two payload classes at the moment. And everyone's trying to, desperately trying to find new ways uh, because we do need new treatment options for patients. Um, <clears throat> in, in this sense, um, you know, we've been investing in ADCs literally around the globe between Europe, US and even Asia. Uh, and so to that effect, I'd say this investment is really part of our strategy to find innovative plays, um, great teams um, with technologies that can really be disruptive. And so from that perspective, I wouldn't necessarily see it in a European context alone, uh, but it really is sort of testament to the potential of the technology that is um, you know, sort of contained in Mirix. Okay, great. Well, um, tell me in simple terms then about this technology which Mirix is working on, uh, uh, it's been developing. It sounds like it's uh, a sort of a third class of ADC payload. Is that right? Tell me a little, little more. Uh, that's correct. So the, the Mirix payload is really based on the NMT or Miristil transferase um, or, you know, easier said NMT inhibitors. Uh, and what that does, th this enzyme really packs on a, a carbon-14 fatty acid to a lot of proteins inside the cell. And if that doesn't happen, then those can't traffic properly and the cell will eventually die. Um, and this is particularly true for cancer cells. So it, it actually hits the life nerve a lot of, of a lot of the cancer cells. Um, and so this, this principle is <clears throat> totally new, not been tested before. Um, as an ADC and, and really sort of supplements the two payload classes that everyone's circling around today, which is the topo ones and the tubulin inhibitors. And, and then um, sort of um, we, we're trying to make um, good with those two classes, but we have to accept that most people will eventually sort of um, suffer from relapse. And then you can't go back with the same payload class that, that um, resistance that develops is usually towards the toxin. So we, we have a desperate need for new toxins to put onto those antibodies. Um, and here the NMT inhibitors seem um, um, a great alternative to what we have. The preclinical data that we've seen so far are super strong. Safety profile is really good. 
as well. So we have very high hopes that this can really sort of transform the way we reconstruct ADCs in the future. Okay, so it's very strong signal so far, but you will know more than most just how long a road it is for biotech to travel to get a product to market. You know, preclinical yes. really is just the first step on that journey, isn't it? So tell yes. me um, what Mirix is going to do with this um, 90 million pounds. It, it sounds like a lot of money. It is a, a lot of money, but um, it's expensive, isn't it, bringing a, a drug to market and developing it? Uh, yes, it is indeed expensive, and, and I think the round size is also a testament um, to the investors, and we were co-leading this round together with Avingworth, joined by EPC, um, Cancer Research UK as well, and existing investors, Brandon and Sophie Nova. Um, sort of everyone recognizing that it does take uh, a, a significant amount of money to develop these things, and we also wanted to make sure that the cap the company has enough capital to drive their programs forward with, with really good speed. So the plan is at this point in time to advance two programs very, in very quick succession to the clinic uh, over the next couple of years. And in fact, I think if we can stick to the plans, we expect clinical proof of concept for the first already in the time frame of 2026, uh, to, sorry, to uh, 27. Um, which would be a, a really great achievement. And, you know, the beauty of, of these constructs really is you don't have to wait for a very long time. You do see the responses very early on in your development. And hopefully with, that, with those data in the pocket, it won't be difficult to raise more money and or sort of strike deals with a, with a big corporate partner. Okay, super. That's very clear. And uh, finally, Michael, um, how does this Mirix investment uh, fit into another holding of venture investors, investments, uh, wider um, investment strategy? Yeah, I think we here at, at Nova Holdings, we're always on the lookout for biotechs that, that come with world-class management teams and that develop products that have the potential to really advance patient care across all therapeutic areas. Um, we are very heavily invested in oncology. Myself, I come with a background as head of development at GenLab with, um, in, in oncology, and so, so it's, it's close to my heart. And so the, the strategy really is to find these potentially disruptive biotechs and then sort of um, you know, invest a sizable amount in these to be able to in, you know, be at the table at the board, um, help the management teams to advance those through development. As we said before, I mean, it usually takes a long time and uh, you do need the necessary expertise. And so from that perspective, Mirix, again, is a perfect fit with our investment strategy. It does come with a world-class team. We have Ed Tate as a founder, has been working on NMTs for the last 15 years. Um, and Robin, as the CEO, and, and his team have done a fabulous job together with the seed investors to bring the company uh, to the stage that they're in with very, very interesting, very um, supported data uh, to be very confident that this will be a success. Michael will be uh, following uh, Merix and what it does in the next couple of years with great interest. Thanks very much for your time. You're most welcome. Thanks, Stephen. Bye-bye. Okay,